Every time a pro changes a graphic setting, half the player base just copies it and the other half says it's placebo. Anisotropic filtering is exactly one of those settings. So today we're not arguing, we're just testing. Performance, input lag and visibility in CS2. Let's explain this properly, but in very simple words. Textures in games, especially in Counter-Strike, is stored as images made up of tiny units called texels. A pixel is a dot on your screen. A texel is a dot inside a texture file. Now here's the key part most people misunderstand. Games don't store multiple filtered versions of textures. Well, at least not Counter-Strike. They store MIP maps. A MIP map is just the same texture saved at different resolutions full size, half size, quarter size, and so on. When you look at a surface far away or at an angle, the GPU picks from this MIP levels so it doesn't have to waste work. When you look at the ground or a wall at a sharp angle, one screen pixel might cover many texels horizontally, but only a few vertically. That's where basic filtering struggles. When you enable anisotropic filtering, the GPU dynamically samples multiple MIP levels, combines them on the fly, and outputs the final pixel immediately. So anisotropic filtering is a smarter sampling method, not extra textures. With that out of the way, let's talk about the part which everyone cares about, performance, latency, and visibility issues. And let's do that right after my sponsor, Sell Your Skins. This video is sponsored by Sell Your Skins. Got CS2 skins just sitting in your inventory? Sell Your Skins lets you cash out real money fast and safely with fair prices. Cash out using PayPal, card, crypto, and many other payment methods. It has also a level system that gives you better rates the more you sell. Use code KITCHEN for an extra 5% bonus. Check out, the link is in the description. When it comes to the performance improvement, I didn't just want to do the dust to benchmark test five times and call it a day because I feel like there's better tests that can be done in this regard. Like just loading up on Ancient and walking over here. It will invoke like a quite a bit of draw calls. And it will give us much better data for analysis to check for performance differences. So first of all, let me just show you my system specs. And then I can show you first the results for the dust to benchmark. Over here, bilinear gives us around 10 average FPS extra. But when it comes to P1 values or 1% lows, it doesn't really show that sense of highness. It's kind of mixed results. Also, those 10 FPS at those high values, the frame time deviation is quite small, as you can see over here. And yeah, not really any noticeable difference in my opinion. And on the display side of things as well, you can see the FPS is almost the same. So no noticeable difference. Also wanted to talk to you about the smoothness again for the smoothness as well, no noticeable difference. But when it comes to the ancient test, we again see no noticeable improvement. You can look at the frame pacing KDE graph. Over here, you might feel, oh, there's so much difference. But if you notice the values, it's like 0.22 to 0.3, which is like minuscule. Now over here in this box plot, you can kind of see one red dot. Now you might be like, oh no, bilinear is causing stutter. Please do not draw inferences from such small, you know, that could be a stutter, that could be my PC, that could be just the game. So don't draw some reasoning from just one sample, just like this, because I tested it for a long time with many samples. And I can tell you that both of these things are quite the same. On average, bilinear has better frame times, but it is only by such a minuscule amount that it doesn't really matter. And the statistical anomaly that you see over here, in this random median sample that I selected is just a statistical anomaly. So don't draw too many conclusions. Both are kind of same. Now let's talk about input latency. Now I didn't do the input latency in the dark environment this time. I did it on ancient where I took 250 samples where increase in 30% luminance value was calculated and the average latency for both the cases came out to be around 7.1 milliseconds. So anisotropic filtering doesn't affect your performance or input lag in any measurable way. I've tested this before on my Vika PC as well and it is true there as well. Should be true on other games as well but I've only tested it in CS2 so I can only test for that. Now let's talk importantly about clarity in CS2. When you really go through the maps in CS2 and test visibility properly, you start to appreciate what Valve has actually done here. The map design is generally thoughtful, at least when it comes to clarity. 
In most playable areas, especially common angles where player models appear, Valve deliberately avoids unnecessary clutter, excessive textures or distracting detail. That's not an accident, it's good competitive design. Because of that, when you test texture filtering, whether it's bilinear or 16x anisotropic filtering, the difference in enemy visibility across most scenarios is honestly negligible. In the majority of angles, you're not suddenly seeing players better or worse just because of the setting. And yes, there are edge cases like Vados pointed out, but they're quite rare. One thing worth mentioning though on lower resolutions, bilinear filtering can introduce shimmering when you're looking away or moving your view. That shimmer can sometimes trick your brain into thinking you saw movement. I personally played on bilinear for a long time for clarity reasons, but after testing CS2 extensively in these few days, I can say the real visibility difference today is minimal. Early in CSGO's life, this wasn't true. The maps weren't so polished, but now things are different. Because of that, I will be switching to 16x anisotropic filtering. It improves overall visual clarity, making grenade lineups easier to read, has no meaningful performance cost, and introduces no input lag. At this point, there's very little downside. Now, Bado's argument is still technically correct, and it is important to explain why. Imagine two identical donks, same sleep, same aim training, same reaction speed, perfectly equal players. The only difference is that one uses bilinear filtering and the other doesn't. In some rare edge cases, the bilinear player might see an enemy a few milliseconds earlier. On its own, that difference is meaningless. But here's the real concept. This is about expected value over repeated trials, explained by the law of large numbers. Each tiny advantage slightly increases the probability of success in a given interaction. One interaction doesn't matter. But across hundreds of thousands or millions of engagements, those microscopic probability gains accumulate. Over time, they shift the tail of the performance distribution, meaning the very best outcomes happen slightly more often. That's why elite athletes chase microscopic advantages, not because one moment changes everything, but because small advantages compound statistically. The key point is this. In modern CS2, Valve's map design has reduced these edge cases so much that this advantage barely exists anymore. So while the theory is sound, the practical impact today is extremely small. That's why you can run 16x anisotropic filtering, enjoy better visuals, clearer utility lineups, and still remain fully competitive. Huge thanks to all the channel members who make this content possible, and to everyone who supports the channel just by subscribing and commenting and liking the video. 